everybody. I would like to welcome you to my session about interoperability for the auto ID world. I would like to show you a ready to use companion specification which is designed from two associations, the AIM Association and the OPC Foundation. This is a corporation and together we have built up a new standard for the auto ID world for interoperability and communication with the whole bench of outer ID devices. So, we have started in 2014 with this working group. That means the association uh, AIM has started to think in the direction to use OPC UA as a common in communication layer for the outer ID world, and they have started the cooperation with the OPC Foundation. Together, we have used one year to build up a first release candidate, which we have presented at the Hanover Fair in 2015. So that means we have just had one year to create a new standard and a new idea to communicate with outer ID devices, which is really fast and really uncommon, especially for the outer ID world, because so far every vendor, every technology has its own communication standard. In 2016, to the Nova Fair, we have already presented the final release of the first version of this new communication layer based on OPC UA. So that means we have just taken a bit longer than two years to create a totally new communication standard together with a lot of vendors. So we are talking about Harding, we are talking about Siemens, Turk, Balov. So a lot of big brands have worked together to create really a new vision, a new future of the communication with our ID devices. What does it mean? That means you have different technologies, different vendors, but you have always the same communication layer to intercommunicate with different devices. That means it is very easy to include this base technology. That means identification, communication with real devices to build up a bridge between the real world and the cloud, the I would say the software world uh, based on a common standard. So to make it easy as possible for our customers, for system integrators, or even for machine manufacturers to use this technology to build up their systems, to build up their solutions. What does it mean to use a common a common language, a common interface for different vendors, for different technologies. Hmm. So it's, we, of course, everybody likes to be a little bit individual and not everybody would like to have the same features, the same benefits, the fa same functionality uh, in, in their devices. So everybody, everybody would like to have their own features and their own benefits, of course, in, in their devices. But there's a big set of general functionality, of general features which everybody needs to have. For instance, we are talking about, when we are talking about auto ID technology, of course, an identification. And that means all the vendors have this kind of base functionality available, and even the different technologies, so that means barcode, UHF, RFID, or OCR, um, technology has this kind of, of same uh, um, features inside. For instance, <laughs> of course, the identification. So that means we have used OPC UA. Of course, we have used OPC UA because of all the general benefits, which you are for sure already aware of. So I'm talking about object-oriented possibilities or model behind. We are talking about security features and so on. I guess you're much more familiar uh, than I could explain during my little session here about OPC UA. 
but we have used OPC UA in the way that we have really used the object-oriented possibilities. So that means we have used a base, uh, a base class and we have derived all the other functions, all the other device types. So that means all the other devices from a base, uh, from a, from a base class to be more and more with each deriving process more and more specific. Here we see in an example then about, an imp about our implementation, about our specification for an RFID reader device. So that means you could see that we have generated the outer ID uh, device type, which is our base device type, and then we have derived the RFID reader from this device. And as you could see, we are using a lot of properties, a lot of functionality already directly from the outer, de outer ID device. And we have spe specified this function, especially for the RFID world. In the same way, of course, we have done it for, other, for the other technologies uh, like OCR, barcode, or whatever I have shown you before. So that means now there is one communication layer available for, the, for different vendors, for different technologies. And of course, we're showing this together with other companies. So Harding, so I'm from Harding, but as well as Siemens, we are both uh, members of the AIM Association and as well both members of the OPC Foundation, but many more. I've already mentioned uh, some other companies and, and we're showing this as well on the OPC Foundation booth uh, at the exhibitions. For sure you are already aware of the demo wall, which is always a part of the, a, a big part of the, of the OPC Foundation booth. And here you could re really see that, that two different devices from two different vendors have the same interface so that the basic functionalities are available. But, and this is very important because of the, um, of the possibility to derive from a base class to do more specific, um, specific functions inside as well to see that Harding or Siemens or other vendors could implement as well some special features, their features, uh, to difference a little bit from each other. And this is important because all the vendors, as I've explained before, would like to have as well their own functions, but as well the standard functions should be the same to make it as easy as possible to use this new technology into uh, real application applications, sorry. So is it just a theory? Is it just a showcase? Is it just paperwork? No, of course not. So I could speak here just about Harding, but as you could see here, I'm allowed to speak about a real customer project. So we have started in 2016 to the no affair, and right after we have had implemented it in our device, uh, we have had already the first customer because everybody would like to work in a, in a future-driven way, I would say. So that means in a long-term strategy way to, uh, today, if you set up a new system, uh, you take care about as well the interoperability with other systems, and you would like to have a system which is as well compatible within the next couple of years, not just today. And for sure, future-driven projects, I would say, are, are focused to, to make sure that this kind of interoperability is available so that not just one vendor is set and is inside such a project. So end customers like to be flexible. So this was my little presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, that's it. <laughs>